but what the Cheeseburger Network does. Have you guys been to one of our sites? Raise your hand. Okay, quite a few of you, but not everybody, which is a great way for me to explain what we do. And if you probably uh, know what we do, it's probably a little bit absurd that I'm here. So if you see photos of cats like that with misspelled captions on it, that's our job. Uh, we post cat photos with misspellings on the internet. And in fact, this was the very first cat that we've ever posted. It's a Scottish uh, fold, that's the name of the cat. It's gray, fluffy, looks pretty happy. Doesn't look very hungry, but he wants a cheeseburger. Just note that the cheeseburger is spelled with a Z, because cats can't spell. But this was uh, January of 2007, about three years ago, uh, when this phenomenon started. But before that, uh, there's actually a long history of uh, people captioning cat photos, like this one. Uh, if you remember posters from the 1970s, uh, there's a, pictures of kittens hanging on ropes or trees. It says, hang in there, hang in there. But before that, we found out that in 1905, people were dressing up cats. Like, this is when popular photography was first invented. Like, people said, what can we do with this magical device that captures photos? I know, I'll grab a cat and dress him up and put a caption on it that says, what's delaying my dinner? <laughs> we haven't really moved that far. So in January of 2007, a couple in Hawaii uh, decided to start collecting these photos of cats. Uh, the genre of this image macro where you caption photos is called LOL cats, LOL cats. And this phenomenon actually started out in a forum called 4chan, um, which is not safe for work for the most part if you know what it is, uh, and I shouldn't talk about it anymore beyond that. But the phenomenon had spread to other humor-related uh, forums like Something Awful, Fark, and things like that. And so in January 2007, the meme, which is kind of the, the, the viral transmission of ideas, this meme called Lolcats was already three years old. But for some magical reason, when these two people actually decided to create a website called I Can Has Cheeseburger, uh, that difficult to spell, in just a couple months, they were burning through bandwidth. They had a 699 shared hosting account and they were serving up all of that uh, uh, server's uh, resources to, to show you cat photos on the internet. So in September of 07, I came around, uh, raised an investment uh, around uh, from a bunch of angel investors in Seattle and purchased I Can Ask Cheeseburger. That's right. We investors purchased a photo of cat pictures. I'm sorry, a blog filled with cat pictures, right. Um, and then we did something even more crazier, which was, hey, let's get people to create humor in graph form. I'm sure you're very familiar with the contents of this one. And having lived here 10 years, uh, I left in 2005 to go to Seattle. Uh, I'm very familiar with that as well. And we kept on continuing to build more sites. This is from Failbook, which is one of our earlier sites. Uh, I'll let you read that for a little bit, but basically, all of our content that we post on our sites are generated by our users. <laughs> we blurred his last name for his safety. So this is what we do. We generate, uh, we run about 50 some websites and we receive about 20,000 submissions every day of things like this, where people are screen grabbing or people are putting captions on cat photos. And in fact, people do even weirder things. And this is probably, our most famous blog, called Fail Blog. So, you've seen us, sometimes I lose the audience after the slide, so I just wanna make sure that we're, we're on track here. Hey, I'm talking, right? Yeah, all right, so. No, um, I, I could just sit here and punch through a bunch of our photos and you'll be just, you'll give me the highest rating for any speaker of the day <laughs> if I just show you cat photos. But I'll also try to tell you in numbers. Uh, in 2007, uh, we started the company. It was me, myself, and I sitting in my living room uh, watching daytime television with a laptop on my lap, uh, screening your photos of cats, uh, photos of your cats. 23 months, uh, this number is the number of months it took to reach our first billion page views. Um, today, it's less than three months. We reach about 16 million people on a monthly basis, and uh, we are one of the largest humor networks in the world. All that because somebody posted a picture of a gray cat. And how did we get here? And I think these are the lessons that, that we've learned about um, what our business is about. Our business is not about creating content. Um, it was about scaling. It was actually how to grow a business so that we can reach more and more people every day. We even crowdsourced our mission statement, which is to make everyone happy for five minutes a day. We're not here to change the world in any 
you know, world peace kind of way or cure cancer. We're not here to make a billion dollars. What we want to do is make sure that there's five minutes of happiness that people can get from each other through our sites every single day. And as we were scaling our business, the thing that I learned was that I was the obstacle. Surprisingly, the market wasn't the obstacle, neither was this cat. Um, I was the obstacle because it was my ego or my pride or the assumptions I had about business. Those things really got in the way of doing our business. It used to be that when you submitted a cat photo, I had to go screen it and make a determination as to whether I wanted to put it on the site. Right? I was making my value judgments on other people's content. So as we turned more and more of that uh, decision-making process back onto the users, the more and more popular the site became. Right? This, this idea of democratization of content is something that we hear about every day, yet in, in actuality, it's a very scary thing for us to actually feel occurring. Once you start seeing your uh, newspapers have columns by random people you don't know, you start to wonder about the credibility of something. But yet, when you go on Facebook, or when you go on the internet, or when you read stuff on Twitter that somebody has retweeted, you don't actually understand the context of credibility, yet you find that valuable, right? So we live in a very distributed information world, and I was really standing in the way. So we had to make really tough decisions, right? How do we get ourselves out of the process? How do we let the users actually do more of the work, right? At the end of the day, when they're filtering uh, our content for the best of what the users had created, and in effect, what they were doing were, was my job. And amazingly, they really enjoyed doing it. So we thought about this. How do we, be, how do we behave as lazy as possible? <laughs> right? That was the lens in which we were actually asking that question. How do we become so lazy that if I wanted to work four hours per week and still be successful, what would I do? And this was part of the decision-making process to make the tough decisions that matter. So, if I wanted to work just four hours, interestingly enough, it has a very uh, good correlation with what the users want from you. So from their perspective, from the user's perspective, if they had 40 seconds on your site, what would they want out of you? They don't want a registration form. Uh, they wouldn't want to register to create old cats, right, to put captions on cat photos. So we don't have registration when you create cat captions. So we just left that off. So we want to keep things as simple as possible to try to remove, constantly remove barriers from people's lives so that we could get to what they want, which is this five minutes of happiness. And that's what I call beautiful alignment. So I'll give you an example of this type of alignment, right? Focusing on simplicity, focusing on making sure that the user experience comes first. Uh, this is the very detailed specifications for one of the most used web-based uh, web image manipulation software. Uh, tens of thousands of images get manipulated by this piece of software that we've written. And this is the spec. <laughs> that green box is the image. That's the only thing that's not noted. There's three lines of text, caption A, caption B, and caption C. You can change the font size, you can kind of make it stay in the middle or to the line to the right. That's about it. Somebody asked the question, what happens if the caption is too long? It's a great question, right? Like, not everything fits in one line. Well, okay, so we had a bunch of options. And let's see. We could auto scale down the font size. So if you kept on typing, it'll shrink that line of font and then it'll fit. Great, but then I didn't really make, want to make that 12 point, right? I kind of wanted that big impact 45 point. Uh, what if you wrap it? Then you end up with like 18 lines of text in the photo. That's not really great. Okay, well, maybe a little bit simpler. What if we warn the user? If you go off the page, we'll like pop up a dialogue box that says, eh, you've gone off the page. Well, that seems kind of annoying. Okay, well, what's the last, what's the only remaining option? You could do nothing. You could do absolutely nothing when a user types too much on the screen. That's what happens. It just goes right off the page. And that's what we did. Three years later, still to this day, if you go to one of our captioning tools and you write too much, it just goes off the screen. No warning, no auto anything, it just goes off the screen. In fact, this method was so successful we ended up with more than a million images in one folder on a $6 monthly shared hosting account. And the department had called us and said, you need to get off this box because you're using up all of our hard drive space. <laughs> and what we had realized was that, by the way, we had to actually write a special tool to call up the file list because Windows wouldn't let you call up a million files on a folder. It would just crash. Just a tip. It took us three weeks to actually get those images off because we had to write a tool. So what, what this really taught us was that if you made something simple enough, human beings are very good at learning, learning by trial and error. I wrote